Warning, we are not trained or licensed professionals. Do not take any advice that we give as official doctoral prescribed medical treatment. We only use the name as a means to appreciate cinema as a therapeutic device, not to be confused with drugs, antidepressants, or any other forms of enhancements that you might find in legal states. Please enjoy responsibly. Additional disclaimer. If the film says f we can say it too. So check the film rating, and that will be our episode rating. Welcome to Film Therapy, with your therapists, Madison and Jake. We are your therapists, even though we're not licensed in any way. Not at all. I mean, we have college degrees, but neither of them are, are therap- none of them are therapy related, so. I've never taken a psychology class. <laughs> I have. I took, I took psychology, two, I took two psychology classes in high school, and I took one in college, because it was required. Okay. I took two sociology courses, I think. No, I just took one, and then I took a bunch of communications courses. Mm -hmm. Interpersonal communication is interesting, actually. That has a lot of psychology in it. I really learned a lot from that class. I'd be really fascinated by a class like that. Um, I wonder if I took psychology classes, if if that would help me diagnose myself further and wonder if I actually have some sort of, like, mental illness or something. I don't know. Um, Yeah. If I'm actually crazy. But, uh, anyways, Napoleon Dynamite, a movie that has nothing to do with any of that yes it, it, it's the great escape it is the great escape so we did record an episode for nausicaa and what oh, happened yeah. was um my voice memos app somehow crashed and i lost all my voice memo files the only one i needed was for nausicaa but i lost the rest of them they're not in recently deleted they're not somewhere else on my computer they're not on my phone so so weird it's it's the weirdest thing it's never happened before so that episode we might either redo or it might be a lost episode that we miraculously find someday so yeah today we're gonna talk about napoleon dynamite instead i'm sorry i'm glad we watched it this week it was fun me too i hadn't seen it in a long time no i hadn't seen it since high school actually oh wow yeah, I don't know. I can't remember the last time I watched it, but as I was watching, I was like, wow. I, like, know every word they're saying, but somehow I forgot that yes. these scenes all exist. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is just a giant quote. Like, people, I remember when it first came out, <laughs> everyone was just like, whatever I feel like I want to do, gosh. <laughs> and every, like, all the quotes, all the time. I even had a little Napoleon Dynamite pen that you click it. And it would say Napoleon quotes. That's that's great. I love it. I think my music teacher was obsessed with it when it came out. When did what year did this come out? Two thousand four, I think. Okay. Our yeah. Fact che- our team of fact checkers are going to check that. <laughs> yes, two thousand four. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so yeah, my music teacher. I remember she was obsessed with it, and she would like play clips from it in class all the time. And then I remember watching it with my friend and we watched the eat the food Tina scene like over (laughs) and over and over and over. (laughs) We just died laughing. (laughs) I'm pretty sure we role played it like, okay, you be Tina this time and I'll be in the (laughs) pool. Was it it, it the same thing as that Twilight video you make with your cousin? Like, like, just like that? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We should do that sometime. That'd be so fun. Yes, that could be our TikTok page. Yes. Um, this was really fun to rewatch. I remember the first time I saw this, I think... I'm, I don't know if I was in 8th grade or if I was a freshman, but I remember one of my teachers had this, had the DVD, and they brought us to class because it was like an off day or before a holiday or something, and we just watched it. And, like, all the older, all the older kids who had seen it, they were quoting it, like, even before the movie started, like... Like, oh, I um, bet. like, are you, are you going to eat your tots? And like, <laughs> they're saying all these random quotes and I'm like, I'm like, what, what the heck are you all saying? And then, and then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, now I get it. And yeah. then in that same like class, like throughout my four years of high school, we watched the movie like multiple times and it was, it got better and better every time we watched it. Like, <laughs> yes, that's great. And I, now I hadn't seen it since then until now. So it's been like, I don't know, a while since I've seen it a few years um at least the full movie i probably like have looked up clips or something yeah 
one thing is I, I don't know if I ever saw the opening credits because since we watched it in school, they just skip that, which is always oh, really? a pet peeve of mine when teachers would do that. But like, it's it's cool. It's whatever. I love the opening credits. Yes, I do too. All the items in the opening, their plot points or dialogue quotes throughout the movie. Like they all ha- they mm. all mean something. That's awesome. Like there's the chapstick and there's a steak. Oh, yeah. And, yep. you know. Tots. Tots, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so I kept looking at those tots in the scene, and they might have eaten, eaten them several times throughout the movie, but oh, I think actually on the board behind them, it's, they call them tater gems or something. Oh, because they live in Idaho, and Idaho is like the gem state or something. Yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because it's, it's like potatoes in Idaho, potatoes. Oh, I get it. Okay. And... <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, what? Oh, because like there's... A bunch of potato farmers and farms in Idaho, too. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Yeah. So uh, then last night, we ordered barbecue. Mm -hmm. Last night? Yeah. And they had a loaded tots on their menu, so I had to get that. And it was delicious. Did you watch... Had had you just watched the... When when did you watch the movie? I watched part of it Friday, part of it Saturday. (laughs) I love that. I wish I could do that. I can do a recap real quick. It'll be pretty short because this movie doesn't really talk about anything. I got it. I got this one. This movie's about this high schooler named Napoleon Dynamite, and he's really unpopular, but that doesn't matter. And it's, it's just about his day-to-day life. And, and then his new friend, Pedro, runs for school president. So, you know, vote for Pedro. Um, go vote. And, oh, also, Uncle Rico shows up, and he's like a huge dirtbag. And then Kip has his lady friend named LaFlanda. Is that, is that her name? Yeah. And um, and then there's also Deb, who's this girl that Napoleon's friends with, and she's really sweet, and they have this like adorable chemistry. And yeah, that's the movie. And there's yep. also Tater Tots. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of random scenes put together. It's great. About Napoleon and like his his hobbies. He's got a lot of hobbies. Yeah. He does like, Future Farmers of America with Pedro and they little well, competitions and yeah that was then great. he volunteers on a chicken farm and gets paid a dollar an hour oh yeah in, in change <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what else does he do oh he dances he goes to thrift stores Goodwill yes when it was happening I'm like is that Goodwill like I know like, I know it's just any old thrift store but I'm like that looks like Goodwill is that Goodwill Probably. Goodwill's yeah. a good place to, to find some uh, reading material. It is. You could just pick up any book, and it could be your new favorite book. You never know. You never know. One one person's trash is another person's treasure. For Mr. Krabs, oh, yes. all trash is treasure. <laughs> I So I have the DVD, and it comes with a special bonus features disc. Mm-hmm. And also, like, a little postcard of Napoleon and Deb dancing at the school dance. That's great. <laughs> and uh the special features i watched some of them it was uh some of them were like the audition tapes for the side characters because they already knew that he wanted john heater to play napoleon because this was actually based on a short film that the director jared hess is it hess jared hess and uh john heater did in 2002 and a lot of the scenes bleed over into the actual movie that they made. So that was on the special features disc. Yeah, disc. I was going to say, is that called, on the... Yeah, it was in black and white. It was probably about five or six minutes, and it was called Palooka. Palooka? I think that was maybe the name of the high school. Okay. Um, well, it's on Letterboxd but... if you want to go rate it. <laughs> oh, okay. Sweet. I will. Yeah, it's... um. It was good. It starts off with Napoleon doing the thing he does in the first scene in the movie, too, where he takes the action figure and throws it out the bus window. Pedro has a brother named Gil, and Gil's the one who needs the wig and shaves all his hair off. Mm-hmm. And then what else do they do that's the same? Uh, there's like a lot of the same quotes, and like his whole personality is the exact same. He looks the exact same. Did I say it's in black and white? Yes, you did. Yeah. That's, that's really cool, though. Yeah, it was it was funny. 
So then, yeah, so the director and Napoleon were already tight, and they knew that uh, John Heater was going to be the Napoleon in the movie. But Awesome. So they had to find the other characters. So they had audition tapes, and then they had, like, John Heater's SNL introduction and something where he was in character as Napoleon Dynamite on an MTV thing. Mm -hmm. There were uh, promos for when the movie came out and, oh, like a behind the scenes thing about shooting the wedding scene between Kip and La Fonda. Mm -hmm. Did you watch that after the credits? No, I didn't. Um, I've heard about that scene, but I've never seen it. Okay. But in the the interest of time, I didn't watch it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, you just finished it tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was like, oh, and then they had a bunch of behind the scenes about different scenes that they did. So they just had like a second camera shooting the director, giving directions and everything. It was mostly like action action scenes where Mm -hmm. Napoleon gets beat up or they did the sand dune scene. Sand dunes, huh? (laughs) I didn't see any worms. No, me either. But maybe that's what happened to Grandma. Which was unfortunate, but the but Napoleon's grandma, that was that was that was a sight to behold. That was great. Yes. <laughs> so random. So yeah, so John was paid a thousand dollars to play Napoleon, and then the movie grossed yeah. over forty million in the US. I can't insane. believe that. Um he was twenty six when they made this. The man who played Pedro was thirty one. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, they look like adults, but also like Hollywood casts adults a lot. I want to know how old the that blonde douchebag was because he looked old. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so the grandma shirt says, my husband and I divorced for religious reasons. He thought I was God. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He thought he was God. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> he thought he was God. Um, oh, my gosh. That's Deb, funny. Where Deb shoots her photos, that's the interior of the house they used for Napoleon. For the oh, really? House. Yeah. That's great. I wonder what John Heater's up to now. He he was in the latest Tremors movie. Tremors Part 7. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, it's just, yeah. I love Napoleon Dynamite because I laugh at every scene, I think. <laughs> I think it's so funny. It's so stupid, yeah. but I love it. I I was laughing so hard when this started. I'm like, thank God we're watching this. Yeah. Just the performances and just the way it's all like strung together. It's so slice of Mm -hmm. life and nonchalant. And then then just just the way he reacts to everything is just... (laughs) It's so great. I know. (laughs) He's just such a character. Iconic. Tetherball is a weird game, isn't it? Yeah, I, I've, I've never played it, but every time I watch this movie, I want to go play it. Yeah, it's like something polar bears play at the zoo. They, You know, they like play with their little ball. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, that's what it reminds me of. You know, that makes sense. Speaking of polar bears, I was watching like the BBC earlier today because I, because I needed a minute. To, I just needed a minute to decompress from life. So I was watching, it, it was the dynasties series yep i watched like 10 minutes the episode was the emperor penguins and it was like showing the whole process of like you know how new baby penguins are born and it was the cutest mm-hmm. thing so you know a baby penguin like poke its head out into the world for the first time and, mm-hmm. and then and then and then and then david attenborough was like um was 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 like they have to go get food for their young and some of them don't survive and it showed one like frozen like dead and i'm like oh, i don't yeah. want to see that i want to see the baby penguins getting killed and then it went to commercial so i changed the channel um, but but I was watching it with my mom, and that, that was both our reactions was like, oh, it's a little baby penguin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and oh. five minutes, and then five seconds later, dead. And I'm like, no, I know it's real, so that makes it worse. Like, right? It's animals in their habitat, you know. <sighs> yeah. Gosh, everything he says is just so humorous, and I love it. Like, like, I, like, like I, I don't know if it's like his mannerisms or if it's like what he's saying or both, but like, yeah, both mostly. Like John Hader, he, is that how you say his name, John Hader? Uh, I think it's Heater. John Hader. He he drew all the drawings in the movie except for the unicorn. Oh just, yeah, I think just, I read that somewhere. I'm just reading the IMDb trivia for the dance routine. He and the director 
improvised and dan- and he danced to three different songs and then they took the best ones from each put them in one routine and ed- made it work in editing uh, oh my ma- gosh made it seamless in editing improvised yes wow that dancing that dance routine of napoleon's just makes me so- feel so happy after having um a very stress-filled week just watching napoleon do that dance routine was just the greatest thing i could have seen like yes. like, I- like i'm gonna go back and watch that again i think i'm gonna try to learn it yeah, yeah i thought about that too that that can that be our tiktok so that can be our tiktok is still oh exactly that. yes <laughs> learn the point oh my gosh. um my sister and i tried to do, we, we were gonna do the routine that ross ross and monica's routine from friends but we couldn't get oh yeah the, the when we were, where we were filming we couldn't get the uh her phone positioned right to get it filmed and we couldn't quite time it but we we know like how to do it it was just like getting it all the technical side <laughs> of it um nice do you know the part i'm talking about yeah it's like it's like they're they're at some new year's they're at uh dick clark's new year's and then they're like we need to we need to get up on the platform let's do the routine ross we haven't done the routine in years and then they do it and it's like the funniest thing yeah but yeah napoleon's dance routine is my probably yeah it is my favorite it's the funniest part of the movie for me although that's it's not saying the rest of the movie isn't funny because it's it's hysterical a lot of the time just the beginning when, when the guy's like hey napoleon what are you gonna do today i'll do whatever i want and then he like <laughs> takes the little like i don't know what it is little like action figure puts it out the window and just pulls it on a string like yeah, there's no like, point to that it. but it's amazing I love, it. I love it so much it's like i think this movie really inspired me and in the type of movies that i want to write and make because mm-hmm. I find myself liking those types of scripts that I read and wanting to do more about like with that where it's just like random stuff but the characters are so amazing that you want to follow them even though nothing is really happening. Yes. I like sure. the way that they talk too like the direction was good where well like Wes Anderson kind of does this sometimes where they just have like one character talk and then the other one talks and they're not really talking to each other, but they're just like talking. Uh-huh. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I forget how they're related to Pedro, but I love the two guys, like, like the two guys that the, 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 the Napoleon's like, oh, yeah. are you like, really, are you like Pedro's uncles or something? And then they have I think that, it was cousins. Yeah, there's cousins. And then they have like that really, they have that really cool car. And then there's the scene yeah. when, when, when Napoleon gives the kid the little whatever it is and then he says like vote for pedro you have pedro's protection and then yes. like when the next time the bully tries to get him he stands up for him and fights back he has like the confidence now which i thought was going to be it because i forgot those guys come back but then they come yeah. back and then the kid then the big kid backs down yeah he's like oh yeah they just drive up and start bumping their music and it's great the bully runs they just, away. They just give so him the funny. stare so and then on the side of their car it says vote for pedro <laughs> <laughs> yeah i forgot about that that's great and Pedro wins. Yes, he does. Yeah, and Uncle Rico is such a jerk. Yeah, I can't stand him. <laughs> he's the worst. He's the worst. But he's still super funny too. Yeah, and he gets his comeuppance, somewhat. And he what? He somewhat gets his gets his comeuppance. His what? His comeuppance. What is that? Here's a dictionary. Look it up. <laughs> comeuppance and Come- see me sometime. Sorry, that's a pun. What? That's a pun. Comeuppance is a word. I, don't, I forget how you spell it. That sounds like a Wisconsin-ass it. word. No, it's actually from a book I read when I was young, and I remember it's like... Is it spelled with a K or a C? C. It's spelled come up pants. A punishment or retribution that one's deserves. One's just deserts. Unpleasant experience a person endures, which is viewed by others as a just retribution for bad behavior. Oh. So it's like getting your just deserts. Like that's... So that's comeuppance. So yeah, he, it's, it's, he gets somewhat of a comeuppance. But then... This girl walks into his field where he parks his van right at the end. And is that like his ex-girlfriend or something? I had no idea who she was. I was, I was, I, I, I don't know. I assumed that's who it was because who, what other random girl would just walk up to a guy who's throwing a football in the field with like a weird van? <laughs> with a arm in a sling? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Because he gets beat up by rex yeah rex um the fact that rex comes back and he's like the husband of the of that woman that's just so funny yeah it's kind of like in sideways 
Yeah. Except, except here it's like set up and paid off. Yeah. He just walks in and goes. <laughs> yeah. With his fists. <laughs> Gets beat up. So funny. Let's see who else. Yeah. Kip. I think Kip is my favorite character. Mm-hmm. The way he talks. It's just like. <laughs> I talk to babes online all day. I'm trained to be a cage fighter. <laughs> no, oh, that's, yeah. That's actually a really good impression. You also sound like <laughs> someone else, and I can't think of who, what character it is. Not from the point in Dynamite, but from mm. a different movie. Some weird movie. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, wait, do that again. Do, do, that, do that voice again. Let's see. What's another quote? For just, just, just make up a random phrase. Napoleon, I'm not going to bring you your chapstick today because... I'm busy with my time machine. (laughs) (laughs) I have some gold bracelets. What about some gold bracelets? There we go. That's what he says. (laughs) Oh my gosh. His relationship with LaFonda is amazing. Yeah. When he walked in the room with his new outfit, I lost it. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I, I wasn't even paying attention to whatever the scene was. And then, and, yeah. and then at the end, uh, when when he's in the blue outfit, I was just like, again, just started laughing so oh, hard. Yeah. I'm like, I know. Go, Kip. Good job. There was a uh, Napoleon Dynamite cartoon series with, I think, most oh, of, yeah. if not all, the original cast reprising their roles, but it only ran for six episodes. And I have never seen a single episode. Me either. Was that on Adult Swim or Nickelodeon? or? I think so. Let me double check. Something like that. Yeah, oh, it was Central. on Fox. That's why it got Fox. canceled because it's on Fox. Mm. Okay, get this. In September 2020, it turns out there's a sequel in discussion. John, he, John Heater said that in, in his interview, he's, he's interested in a darker take on the film's characters instead of rehashing the original plot. Quote, I feel like the future for Napoleon would be a lot more raw and edgy. So whatever he comes up with would be fun to explore. Because I think whatever Jared oh comes up with won't be your typical, let's do a sequel where they all look the same and they act the same. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting yeah. development, unquote. And then it said, uh, let me make sure this is right. Yeah, so the guy who plays Pedro, his name is uh, Efron Ramirez. And if, I'm apolog- and if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Because Pedro, you're great. But um, but the actor who played Pedro said he improvised a script for a sequel in which Pedro is married to Summer, has five kids, and owns a bakery. Um, also, Kip has become a cage fighter, and Rico has a new business. Make that. Yes. Make that. Yeah, I could see it being still the same directorial style, but it's a completely different topic and scenes and everything. Because obviously, they wouldn't be in high school anymore. It would be. Right. The adults, but it would be so funny still. I bet they even brought bought the brought the grandma back for the animated series. <laughs> like that's great. Um, I kind of want to watch it because it's only six episodes. You could watch that in like a day. Oh yeah. Like how long is that? Let's see, how long is the episode? Like twenty two times six. That's like you know what? Like two hours and fifteen minutes. Two hour. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here it is on Amazon. Complete animated series on DVD. Well, it's out of print. It looks like. Oh. The DVD for the movie is three dollars and seventy four cents. It's a great deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the series is two hours and fourteen minutes. The whole animated series. So okay. that's like a movie. Although I mean, it got canceled. So I don't know if it's good, but like, I'd, I'd at least like watch an episode. Like, I'd be curious. It's probably a lot of the same stuff they did in the movie, you know, and that's probably why it was didn't do well. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know. Maybe it's different. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out. I guess we could find out. Um, yeah. So I said, I guess we'll find out. And I'm like, wait, what does that mean? We're not going to watch it. Like, <laughs> unless I find it for free somewhere. Anyway. Yeah. I love the, I, I know, I know you said this before, but I love the opening credits. When the MTV logo started, I didn't know it was a logo. So I'm like, wait, why is this movie starting in space? Like, like <laughs> I, I knew it was quirky, but like <laughs> the opening credits also remind me of the credits of Good Burger where it starts well i guess oh. kind of because the opening of that movie is like a burger being made and this is like yeah. food prep in a way yeah and then seeing the fox searchlight logo and hearing the fox fanfare is always a treat because you know we don't get that anymore yeah i also don't know if i've seen this if i have seen this in widescreen before because i think i don't know i don't know because because you have the dvd you said i don't know if it's like mm-hmm. i think the dvd that we watched had 
full screen and widescreen. Like you had like it's like a flip flip side disc, like a flipper disc. So like I don't mm-hmm. know if I I don't know I don't know if I've seen this on widescreen before today, but now I have. So that's kind of okay. cool. I love the uh, the music, the White Stripes song during the opening credits. Also, oh yeah, it's so weird that the whole movie gives off like an '80s aesthetic, but it's definitely like set in 2004, 2005. Yes, yes, for sure. It was confusing though. It's confusing to a lot of people, I think, because they're like, "Oh, this is definitely set in the '80s," but then they've got really the only thing that gives it away is the student ID in the beginning that says. Napoleon Dynamite school year 2005, 2006, or 2004, 2005, or whatever it is. Because mm-hmm. what else? I mean, they have, they've got, well, they got, uh, they have a computer that Kip talks online with, so that's not the 80s. But we never really see, we see the computer, but we don't see what's on the screen. Like, like yeah. it's, it's the old, more bulky, it's like the bulkier monitor. Mm-hmm. I remember in the behind the scenes shot where they were napoleon and kip were talking and it was right before they have their slap fight or whatever i think Uh and someone was like windows 91 so i think they had that on the computer (laughs) which is crazy oh is that even a thing is that even i think so even that i I know windows 95 is a thing uh so yeah windows 91 is a thing (laughs) okay great and that's that's what they claim to use in there i guess and their cars no their cars are older yeah but yeah, it's just a, it's a nice vintage aesthetic. Napoleon's like especially the dance scene is so eighties. Yes, and it's great. Everyone's eighties. Summer is eighties. The blonde guy's eighties. Mm hmm. The dance they play eighties songs. Mm hmm. Yeah, I I love the dance and I love the ending. The ending was really sweet. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because Uncle Rico almost ruined Napoleon Dynamite's relationship with Deb, but. Then she realizes that Rico's a piece of shit and plays tennis tetherball with Napoleon in the sunset in the sprinkler rainbow of Idaho. I love it. Poet. That's, Beautiful. that's a perfect way to put it. Beautiful. One other thing I love about this movie is just like the set design and the production design. Like how all the mm-hmm. how the all the like how there's a pattern with the colors, with the lockers, and just the way like like how the school looks like it looks like any other school, but it also looks extremely unique at the same time. Yeah. Like, I love that. Me too. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a lot else to talk about. Yeah. Me either. Did you watch anything this week? Yeah. I watched the movie Skins because I saw it was on Greg's Letterboxd and I looked at the premise and I was like, <laughs> this looks like my type of movie. I thought Skins was a TV show. It is. And... Is it... Are they connected at all? No. Okay. No. This is a foreign film in Spanish, which has kind of inspired me to learn Spanish more. So now I downloaded Duolingo. Actually, I've been watching a lot of this series called Behind Her Eyes. Uh-huh. And it's on Netflix. It's about lucid dreaming, which is really cool. I love lucid dreaming. And it if I watch it right before bed, I've noticed I've had some crazy dreams. So the other night I watched it and I ended up dreaming in spanish because i know some spanish but and enough to like dream a little bit in it i guess but it was so surprising to wake up and remember that i had like conversations in spanish it was so crazy so also that has inspired me to learn spanish more so now i'm i'm getting my duolingo back in action i'm gonna learn spanish more yeah anyway so skins is in spanish it's super artsy and covers some deeply deeply horrifying disturbing to- topics and has some very horrifying scenes but it's about people with deformities and how they live and it's and they're all connected too so you start off with like a couple random stories of people but then they all intertwine and you find how they connect and I love that yeah the way they have their conversations too was they're just kind of dry I think I think that's what I like in movies: dry conversation with little expression, mm-hmm. like Yorgos Lanthimos movies, Wes Anderson, Napoleon Dynamite, and this movie had that too. Yeah, overall, it was just like I was just like, wow, I haven't felt this way about a movie in a long time. Wow, I don't think I'll watch it again just because of like the disturbing parts, but it was it made me feel away. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah. There's there's another foreign movie I've heard of called The Skin I Live In. So I, I Ooh, but, but that's yes. it's totally different. But but for a second I was like I wanted to make sure I hadn't gotten it mixed up in my head. So I'm like that one's really good too though. I I haven't seen it. I know what it's about. I'll probably never watch it because like. Distur- movies that are meant to disturb you aren't really for me. I mean, I, I it's kind of hypocritical because I love David Lynch movies, but um, <laughs> but but um, I, I feel like a lot of movies that are like this is disturbing and it's uncomfortable to watch, but it's great and it's well made. I just I don't like movies like that because I don't want to. Mm-hmm. It depends on what it is, but I really watching something unpleasant, even if it's artistically well done, that's not something I really appreciate. I would not That's recommend a this movie for thing. you. That's a personal sure. thing, though. Yeah. Even before I said that, would you have not recommended it? No. Yeah, I was thinking about you, and I was like, no way. <laughs> so, yes. Is it something that I couldn't get through, or is it like... Probably. Okay. Yeah. The opening scene, the first scene is just disgusting. But, yeah, it's just like so gross and disturbing. But for some reason, I liked it. Maddie, guess what? You're 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 even more psychotic than I am. I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> you're psychotic. That's why we're that's why we're therapists. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, points. I was like, okay, I should turn this off, but I just kept watching. Well, I'm glad. I, I'm glad that I listened to you talk about it rather than watch it because. Yeah. No. Oh uh, no 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 no. Yeah. And so after that, I watched. Please tell I care me a lot. Later. I care a lot. Uh huh. Okay. It's on Netflix, and it won Golden Globes and stuff. And so I was like, okay, I'll see what it's about. This one's better, but still kind of bad because this woman, her character, is someone who takes advantage of senior citizens and becomes their legal guardian after they she convinces the court that they are unable to take care of themselves and then she somehow gets all of their assets and their house and their money and stuff and she steals everything from them yeah it's horrible but then like the russian mafia gets involved and yeah (laughs) what Mm -hmm. the hell yeah and then in um, russia where is it set nope um like in la what but there's some comeuppance that happens as well so (laughs) Come up and see me sometime. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so that was, I don't know. I didn't really like it that much. It took me like I had three different sessions to watch it. And oh. I was just kind of like, eh, it's okay. Plus the beginning was like, oh my gosh, this woman is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Then I watched last night, Noah and I watched The Island with Scarlett Johansson and Ewan McGregor. Have you heard of that? I have. I have not seen okay. it, but I've heard of it. Okay. It's a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> but the story and the premise is really, really good. The first act is really good. It's very intriguing. You're kind of finding out all the underground things of what's happening. and But then it, the second half is just mostly explosions and action sequences. And I'm like, I'm not here for this. Sorry, Michael Bay. But then, you know, it... It ends, there's a resolution and everything, but basically the whole thing is a spoiler, so I'm not going to talk about it more, but it was good. Have you um have you seen Pearl Harbor? No, I haven't. Have you seen Armageddon? No. Have you seen Deep Impact? No. That would be a fascinating double feature, because Michael Bay has a movie in the Criterion Collection, and it's Armageddon. And then there's mm. also Deep Impact, which came out at the same time, and they're very similar. So that would be like now, like Venom and Upgrade. Where the, What's where the, Upgrade? It was a it was a movie. So we were in the cage one day, and we were, we watched the trailer for Venom, and, and and then I was like, I love you, Tom Hardy, but I have no interest in this movie. And then and then also the same day, someone was like, Hey, let's watch the trailer for Upgrade. It's the exact same trailer, but instead, but there's no Venom. It's just like different kind of superpower. Like they're totally hmm. unrelated movies, but they look to the exact same. Really? Plot-wise, they might not be, but trailer-wise, they're the same <laughs> movie. <laughs> nice. Is that a new one or an old one? These were from both, like, the same years, like 2018, I think. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't hear about Upgrade. Or did I? But what is it about? Who's in that? Let me look that up. I don't know. 
Logan Marshall Green. Hey, that's my husband. <laughs> well, sorry, my ex-husband. We, we divorced because he thought he was God. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never heard of that. Okay. Anyway, if you watch the that's trailer, all I watched. Like, 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 don't do it because now because Venom's not worth it. But like, if you watch the trailers back to back, they look like the same movie. It's hilarious. That's funny. Unintentionally yeah. funny. Yes, I'm done. Uh, that's all I watched. What did you watch? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so I watched the remainder of Wandavision. Okay. And I really yes. liked the finale. It's really I heard good. It, was good. it is. It is really good. There's one character that they make a choice with that I f- that has gotten a lot of mixed reception on whether it was worth it for the joke that they made, but mm. um, but I didn't mind it while watching it. But then once once the episode was over and I thought about it a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany are both incredible in it, and the performances are so good. And and it's all about um, this this isn't really a spoiler. It's all about dealing with grief. And the ways we process things, and that was really mm. beautiful. That's cool. It was really good. Even though there's like minor things I can nitpick about the series as a whole, I, I enjoyed it overall. I don't know if I'm gonna watch Falcon and Winter Soldier or the other MCU series because like Endgame was the end, and I don't want the MCU to become like Star Wars for me. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, WandaVision was really good, and I'm glad that I watched it. So who knows? Good. I'm excited for Doctor Strange two, and Guardians three, and Spider Man three. And all the ones I'm excited about. Those sound like good. Those are all like some of my favorite Marvel yeah. uh, characters. So. Yeah, because yeah, Gar- Guardians 2 is incredible. It's incredibly good. And then obviously Tom Holland is great as Spider-Man. Um, yeah. And then uh, Doctor Strange 2 is being directed by Sam Raimi. So going to go That's see right. that from my boy Sam. Sam's great. <laughs> we all love Sam. Sam Raimi. We love Sam. Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. So that was the only thing I watched. I haven't I haven't watched much lately, but I hope to for next week. Yeah, I also me too. I also watched Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which is a great oh yeah, which is a very fantastic movie. It's just tacking on right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn it! I, I I was trying to make it seamless, and you made it obviously not seamless. Sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Nausicaa is a pretty good movie. I like it a lot. It's it's a really good. Pretty good, uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. A uh, good movie. Um, did you watch it more than once or just once? I just watched it once. I, I yeah. wish it was a little longer, or I wish it was a series, because I guess the manga is is like longer than the movie, but I don't know. Yeah, it was really good. The whole story is really unique. Nausicaa's a great character, a great female lead. Yeah, absolutely. And that was basically what the episode was, so it's just us talking in more detail about that, about how yeah. great Nausicaa is and about how great the movie Nausicaa is. We connect yeah. it to Dune a lot, because the ohms are the sandworms, and Patrick Stewart is in both. Yeah, there's a lot of things in it that probably inspired a lot of other movies that came out later yeah especially probably even inspired miyazaki with some of his later movies that he would make go on to make oh yeah yeah so that's all i watched for this week so next week we will be watching a movie called the way way back and we will be having a special guest on yay yay i'm excited i'm really excited um we're gonna have my friend Tuan, our friend Tuan, on the podcast uh and this is one of his favorite movies which which is good so yeah. yeah i'm excited to see what he has to say i've seen this movie once before but it's been a while so i'm excited to watch it again i watched it with him one time and it was glorious because we watched that garden state and hang on let me because we, we had like a whole movie marathon this is like one of the nights we had where we just stayed up super late um, but we watched like, we watched like, I think we watched before midnight and then way, way back and then garden state. And then we watched like less serious stuff. Wow. But it was really fun. That sounds awesome. So go home and watch the way, way back. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah. So thanks for listening this week. Um, as, as you do every week, hopefully yes. or most weeks. You can follow us on Instagram, please at film therapy podcast. And we're going to start TikTok soon. I think. Yeah. We'll let you know the the handle for that. Yep. And we've got it's probably gonna be YouTube the same channel. Probably gonna be Film Therapy Podcast if we So can don't get steal it. it. Don't steal it. <laughs> Otherwise it's gonna be Film Therapy Podcast with two T's. Or or and Film Therapy Podcast, I don't know. Sixty nine. I was gonna go for something more creative, but <laughs> 
sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna go make myself a dang quesadilla. I'm gonna go play some tetherball. Ball.